Salute YouTube. All right, so listen. So I wanted to start off with this story. Like I said in my last video, I had a little story about John Gebert. Now, I can't remember the exact year. I'm not sure. I was little. I was maybe nine, ten years old. So we were living in Queens, but my cousin Ray Anthony, he was living in uh, Staten Island at the time. So they were having a big party, like a big party for uh, Easter. It was the night before Easter. And the whole family was there. All the kids, my cousins, uh, Maria and Michelle, uh, uh, their cousin Ricky, my brother Brian, my parents, uh, my cousin Ray Anthony and his wife Sandy. So we're all, all over there and they're preparing for Easter and, you know, all the kids went to sleep. We all basically, we went to sleep on the floor, under the tables, everything, wherever we could find the spot. Um, <clears throat> probably about midnight, one o'clock in the morning, there's a pounding on the door. Like they're trying to break the fucking door down, like just pounding, pounding, pounding. It woke everybody in the house up. So I kind of come out of my sleep or whatever, and I hear my dad and my cousin Ray Anthony arguing with somebody at the door with a guy so i get up i go look to see what's happening of course they tell me to to stay away to back up but i can see what's going on and it's this guy you know he's in a black leather coat uh you know dangerous looking mob looking guy kind of like you know he definitely looked like somebody who might have been a connected guy uh now as a kid I don't know if I put that together in my head back then. I mean, I was raised on, on, on mob movies and seeing these guys around the neighborhood and everything else. So maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But looking back on it, I can still see the guy and, and picture him, what he was wearing, how he looked, seeing him standing there in the doorway. So my dad's screaming at this guy. And I guess the reason the guy was there was because uh, my, my cousin Ray Anthony's wife, Sandy, her sister was seeing this guy. I guess, you know, they were going together. They had something, you know, some sort of relationship happening. Well, my dad's screaming at this guy, trying to tell him to get the fuck out of here. There's kids here, blah, blah, blah. So the guy pulls out a gun, starts waving a gun around. He's threatening everybody in the house. He's going to shoot people, blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> eventually, uh, Sandy's sister, I can't remember her name, it escapes me right now. Um, but she convinces uh, Ray Anthony and my father to let her go with him. Turned out to be John Gebert. In the middle of this, while my dad's yelling at him, my cousin Ray Anthony kind of nudges my father and whispers to him, listen, that's he's with John Jr., meaning obviously John Gotti Jr. So... They knew it was a dangerous situation. There was all kinds of kids in the house. My whole family was there. This girl's begging to, to just let, let her go with them, let her go with the guy. So finally, that's pretty much how it got resolved. She left with him, and that was it. But that was my little experiences I, I had as a child, you know, with John Gebert. That's, that's what I know of him. I can still see him. You know, he was a maniac. He was fucking, you could tell he was coked out of his mind. He was uh, he was on a rampage. He was taking this girl with him one way or the other. That's the way that's the way it looked to me. So anyway, the reason I bring that story up is because John A. Light and all of his bullshit, he likes to uh, mention all the murders he committed and all that. You know, like I said before, you could watch the Crime Watch Daily episode with him, and all in the same episode, he says he. Uh, he killed dozens of guys. Uh, he shot dozens more. Then he says he admitted to six murders. Then he says he was only charged with two. I'm not sure. I could be getting the numbers wrong. I got it written down right here. But what it comes down to really is the bottom line is he pled guilty to two murders. Two murders, four conspiracies. That's what he pled guilty to. Now, I'm not exactly sure, but I believe uh, the second one that he pled guilty to, he didn't pull the trigger. It was uh, he had involvement. He says he ordered John Burke to kill Johnny Gebert. So 
I don't know. I mean, I don't know how he thinks he can he can make all these different claims. Like I said, just in that episode alone, he makes three different claims. He was he killed dozens, but he was charged with six, and he only pled to two, or some bullshit like that. Uh, this is not the way it works. Okay, let me explain now. To end the John Gebert thing real quick, I found out later on, years later, my dad told me that Johnny Gebert had been killed outside a bar uh, in, in Queens, I believe in Woodhaven. And uh, that was the end of that story for me. But going on to his murders, I got a lot of guys in the comments saying, oh, he names all these guys he murdered and he, he has all these details and blah, blah, blah. No, he doesn't. Okay, let me explain. When you do this queen for a day with the FBI, when you sit down with a U.S. attorney and you do this proffer agreement, you got to admit to every crime you ever committed, every crime you ever committed, every crime you were ever involved in, and everybody who was involved in it with you, okay? You can't say, I killed two people and then go plead guilty to killing only two people and then start doing interviews and documentaries and shit talking about, no, I killed dozens of guys. No, oh, no, no, it wasn't just those two. I also killed this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. If you listen <clears throat> to some of his fucking crazy interviews, who didn't he kill? He killed everybody, I, everybody. I, I think they're friends of mine when I was a kid, when I didn't even live in Queens anymore. I think he killed them too. He killed everybody. It, it's fucking ridiculous. It can't happen. You got to understand. It's not my opinion that it's bullshit. It's bullshit. If, if you admit to a certain amount of murders, plead guilty to those murders, take a sentence with your cooperation agreement on those murders... And then start admitting to other shit or or if another informant or a cooperating witness comes along and starts uh, implicating you in other crimes that you didn't admit to, cooperation agreement is torn up. They don't care if you served your sentence or whatever and the whole thing's over and done. They'll bring you back. They'll re-indict you. You're going to get charged with all this shit. No leniency, you're going to get locked up. And you'll probably get even more time because you made an ass out of them the first time. They don't fuck around like that. Everybody knows it. When you sign any kind of cooperation agreement or plea agreement, uh, admitting to certain things, you stick to that. You, you stick to it. You If there is other crimes you didn't tell them about, you better, better pray to God they never come out. Because when they find out, they're going to hit you hard. And, and, and all that shit you did, all that cooperation, that goes away. They don't care about that anymore. They don't give they don't give a fuck. They're, they're gonna they're gonna take it out on you and they're gonna make you pay. Especially somebody like John A. Lake, considering that he did them basically no good with his testimony. And and, and the John Gotti Jr. trials, the jur jury foreman even said we didn't believe him. They didn't believe John A. Lake. Which is crazy because a prosecutor could basically make a jury believe anything. But they put this schmuck on the stand and he fucking <laughs> he just uh he blew it for them because he wasn't believable. And he's not believable now. Uh, he pled guilty also to uh, eight shootings and two attempted shootings. That's what he pled guilty to, okay? Two murders, four conspiracies, eight shootings, two attempted shootings. But now he killed dozens of guys and he shot dozens more. Okay, if you look up, look it up on the thing, uh, Wikipedia, whatever it says, he estimated that he shot 20 to 40 people. Again, this is nonsense. This is this this can't it, 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 it can't happen. It's not an opinion. It's fact. And then he says things like um, like uh, I don't remember everybody. It was 20 to 40 people. How, how could you not be sure? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you that major of a criminal that you don't remember all the people you shot? Look, shooting somebody's a big deal, okay? I shoot somebody, I'm going to remember it. I, for Christ's sake, I mean, it, it's not something you just, did I shoot him? Did I, fuck, I can't remember. Did I hit him with a fucking baseball bat? Did I shoot him? Maybe I killed him. I can't remember. Get, get the fuck out of here. Get, get for real. This is bullshit. This is, this, is, this is why he has no credibility. This is why I don't understand, other than the fact that he's got such a following and there's money in it for them. Why would you align yourself with this fucking jerk-off? Like, I don't know Gene Borello. I don't know much about him. But the worst fucking person he could have aligned himself with is a light. 
A Light is a fucking clown. He's a joke of a guy. Nobody takes him seriously. And why would they? Why would you take him seriously? He, he's, he's not a serious person. He's done some shit. I'm not one of these guys that's going to come on here and say that A Light was a nobody. He was obviously a somebody. Uh, anytime you're, you're tapped to, to uh, testify in a, in a trial of a major figure or you're given a cooperation agreement and you can, you can plead guilty to murders, even if it's one murder and a couple of conspiracies, whatever it is, um, you're obviously somebody to an extent. So he, I'm not saying he was a nobody. I never said he was a nobody. I said he's not what he says he is. And he's not. He wasn't this big gangster. He talks about, I ordered this, I ordered that. Who the fuck are you? Who's taking orders from you? You, you don't order anything. You're, you take orders. You take orders. You don't order nobody to do nothing. You're a fucking street guy. You're not even Italian. You're not even Italian. And you're telling me, me that, that in an Italian organization, you're, you're ordering people to do shit? Okay. All right. So anyway, that's... Uh, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Another thing, with A-Lights fanboys, uh, their comments, you know, oh, how could he, uh, uh, Jimmy Calandra, Jimmy Calandra's a pussy. He challenged A-Light knowing that A-Light just had heart surgery and, and he can't, he can't, uh, he, he can't fight Jimmy Calandra right now. He just had surgery, but he could fight John Gotti Jr. So he could back down to Jimmy Calandra and they could make an excuse all day. But he can come right back out right after that and say, no, but I want to fight John Gotti Jr. No, it's, of course not. You know why? Because you know Jimmy Calandra will fight you. And you know John Gotti Jr., he's not even going to pay attention to this bullshit. John Gotti Jr. doesn't really have anything to prove. A-Light's got things to prove. And he can't. It's been years now. We've seen nothing. We've seen no corroboration of anything. Everything is his claims. And as far as knowing John Gotti Sr., listen. If he knew John Gotti Sr. like that, and he was close to him, the prosecutor, the, the first thing he would have said when he put A-Light on the stand is that he would have shown every little proof, every little bit of proof there is that A-Light was close with Sr. Because if he was close with Sr., it takes, a, it, it, it's a lot easier to believe that, you know, he had this friendship with Don, John Gotti Jr., and maybe John Gotti Jr. did order him to commit all these murders and do all this other shit. It didn't come out in court that he's that, that he had any association with John Gotti Sr., because he didn't. He didn't. He didn't have any. You know what I mean? So this is one thing after another. Uh, A-Light's a clown. You know, he's backing down to Calandra. He's putting up this fucking, this bullshit uh, a challenge to John Gotti Jr. John, John Gotti Jr. is not going to pay any attention to this. He, he's living his life. He's doing his thing. Uh, he could call John Gotti Jr. a rat all he wants. John Gotti Jr., he, yeah, he, he, he did the 302. He sat with them for a half hour or whatever it was. But nobody got indicted. Nobody went to prison. He gave him a bunch of bullshit, old murders of people who were dead committed, stuff his father did in, in the early 80s. I'm not saying that was right. Even he doesn't say it was right. John, John Gotti Jr. said, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. But he did it. So it is what it is. And now, now A-Light compares himself to him. Well, if I'm a rat, John Gotti Jr. is a rat. No, nope. no people went to prison because of you. And you tried to put other people in prison, but you failed because you're full of dog shit and nobody believes a fucking word you say because you're a clown. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's most of it. Uh, there's another thing I heard him say a little while ago. I was watching a video earlier, which by the way, this I like doing these videos and I don't remember everything I ever heard A-Light say, so every now and then I have to uh, I have to do a little research. And let me tell you, I'd rather read this stuff because listening to this fucking clown is driving me insane. His fucking fake raspy fucking cookie monster voice and his, his everything about him, the way he speaks, the way he, he constantly says we when he's talking about the mafia, La Cosa Nostra, whatever you want to call it, he's constantly we, we did this, we gave the order to do that, we did this, we did, get the fuck out of here, there's no we, you're not Italian, man, you what the fuck, unless you're talking about the Albanians, stop saying we, please, you're driving me up a fucking wall, I'm gonna lose my mind with this fucking guy over here, and everything, Everything, all his claims, you can hear the bullshit on top of everything he says. 
I'll never understand why this guy just couldn't come out and tell his life story. He still could have got books, uh, book deals. He, he might have gotten a movie deal. He, he, uh, he'd probably still have the same success, if not more, because at least if we could confirm the shit he's saying, then people would have something to believe. People could say, all right, he's credible. Because look, just like just like with Jimmy Calandra. With Jimmy Calandra, you could hear him tell a story. And then you could read that story in two, three other books. Newspaper articles, court documents, indictments, all this shit. Okay? Like I said, I have yet to hear Jimmy say anything that can't be verified. Jimmy, he... Because he, he doesn't add shit and he doesn't take away. He just tells it like it is. John A. Light, it's, you know, everything's got to be... I, I was looking on John A. Light facts uh, earlier, and, and even John Gotti Jr. said, you know, he, he did these little low-level murders of drug dealers and stuff, and then he goes in court, and he tries to add stuff to it. To, oh, I was ordered, I was dead, blah, 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 because he wants to make it seem like, uh, like it was a big mafia hit, and he was a big mafia hit man. No, he had little beefs on the street, whatever. He might have been trying to take over some type of territory. I'm sure John Gebert got in the way of some of that. And, you know, that's why John Gebert got killed. Uh, this was not big mob business. It just wasn't. I don't think John Gotti Sr. was ordering fucking punk-ass Johnny Gebert to get killed. <clears throat> so, uh, I, and I heard him say what I, earlier that he, uh, Vinnie Butch Correo, was made in his house. He was made in John A. Light's house. That's where they held the ceremony. Now listen, I'm not sure the exact year of any Butch Correo was made. And maybe, if he was made by Gotti Jr., I guess that's possible. But everything else that I know tells me, no fucking way. These are the most secret ceremonies ever, ever, ever held, that ever, that ever took place. They're in secret locations. The guy getting made doesn't even know where it's going to happen until it happens. And they're going to have it in some Albanian guy's house. What the fuck is next? What is he going to say next? I don't know. But I'm sure it'll come in question form and it'll be followed by, yes, I did. I don't know. That's all I know. He's a fucking joke of a guy. He's a jerk off of a guy. I, I can't stand this motherfucker. If you haven't been able to figure that out yet. Anyway... So, uh, yeah, that, and, you know, now this, uh, this Jimmy Calandra and Hootie thing, I think is going to be interesting. <laughs> Hootie's calling everybody out in that video earlier. He seems really, really, he, he's got some agita right now. He's a little aggravated. And, uh, and once again, you know, like I said, I don't know enough about Rudy, uh, Hootie, whatever the fuck his name is. I don't know enough about Hootie, but I know enough about Jimmy Calandra. And you can't say, at this point, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're John A. Light. I don't care if you're Hootie Russo. I don't care if you're Larry Mazza, that fucking bug-eyed fuck gunner. I don't care who you are. You can't say Jimmy Calandra was a nobody. You can't say he was a nobody, and you can't say he never did anything. You, these are not the claims you can make. Not if you know anything about, about what went on in, in, at that time in Brooklyn. There's no such thing as a nobody getting indicted with the consigliere of the Bonanno family and another made guy, Joe Bonanti, not to mention all the other co-defendants and everybody else involved with that case that were serious guys. You don't, you don't get indicted in a case like that when you're a nobody. You don't, you know, have the reputation Jimmy Calandra had if you're a nobody. It just doesn't work that way. It's a ridiculous statement. This is, if there's some stuff you might be able to say about Jimmy, I don't know. Maybe there's shit you know that I don't know. I'm quite sure. I wasn't on those streets at that time. But uh, you can't say he's a nobody. So you're playing yourself right now, really, and, and, and no one else, especially not Jimmy. Jimmy's doing well. Jimmy's got a lot of support. So uh, I don't know if that's it. I think that's it. Uh I'm pretty sure that's it for this video. I wrote some things down, but uh, I got a little bit of uh, ADD. My, got a lot of stuff going on up there. So I don't know. I might miss a thing here and there, but I'll catch it on the next video. So that's it. Oh, and one other thing about the comments. 
I try to answer everybody's comment because I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for everybody, every subscriber, every comment, every compliment. I try to thank everybody. I try to reply, you know, leave as long as a, a reply as I can. But I don't know what the fuck it is with YouTube. I get a notification that says so-and-so said this. Then I click on it and go to the comment section. There's nothing there. So I don't know if they remove certain comments. Like I'll see some comments and then the next day those comments will be gone. I don't know what it is. So if I miss your comment, if I don't answer to it or reply, take my word for it. It's not that I'm ignoring you. I'm trying. I just, I haven't figured this thing out yet. And I don't know if there's these YouTube community guidelines that are for some reason uh, taking some comments away. I'm not sure, but it's just not letting me see all of them. Or I see them in a notification, but I can't reply. I don't know. I'll figure it all out as I go. Guys, I'm trying here. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Jimmy Calandra's Q&A tonight. He's doing on Lee Cole's show. That's at 8 o'clock. Uh, and I'm looking forward to Jimmy's next video. And um, I'm done for tonight. I'm going to watch a movie with my wife, eat some dinner. And uh, I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible with another video. Please keep liking these videos and subscribing. Leave any kind of comments you want, positive, negative, I don't care. I appreciate all of them. And I'll see you guys next time. Salute.